Hey folks, Michael McGee here. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about one of the most succulent, delightful treats on earth, hog jaw. People call them jowls because they're so big and they're just massive underneath that hog's chin. When you cut it off, you can tell the difference when you get close to the cheek meat, like what we've got or any other animal's got. It's a completely different kind of meat. The jowl is special. Did you ever get called into the principal's office as a child and sit there as the big principal sat there scowling and with all of his heart explaining why you need to straighten up his great jowl, a quiver? This is the part that was quivering when his jowl was quivering right here. This is it. When you take him quivering jowls and you put them in the salt, for 24 hours. We're just gonna plop these babies up here. I'm talking about some beautiful, healthy. So as you can see right here, big, these are from a smaller hog. But you kill a smaller hog, these jowls are still worth saving. Don't throw them out. Please don't throw them out. I'm gonna wash them off right now, get them all sprayed down, and we're going to the smokehouse. Here we are. We've already got some jowls in here, but we're gonna hang some more, starting with this big monstrosity of a jowl. Oh man, what a hog jaw this is. I'm gonna hang him right here. I don't really want them touching. I may put him right there. I don't want him touching. I got a smaller one here. I can easily put between. If I need the space, I'm, I may not need the space that much. That's beautiful, not touching. A huge thanks to Mr. Andy Eddings for giving me these hooks. What a blessing they have been. And last but not least, we're gonna take this big old boy and hang him right here. Let's get the smoke rolling and let's do this. I like thing. to use good wood and I don't have a stack of wood dedicated strictly for my smoking and one day I hope to but right now I don't so I have to come to the woodshed and look what do I want to smoke this wood with well right here on the top is a good one that's a red bud why did we cut a red bud tree there on they're so beautiful in the spring it already was broke over smashed down we didn't kill a perfectly good tree my wife would kill me for that but if you have some it's good, it's a nice dark colored wood, as you see. And it's good for smoking. So we're gonna be using some of that. This right here is Tree of Heaven, otherwise known as Alanthus. Terrible choice. <laughs> this right here is Red Oak. Not a bad choice at all when it comes to smoking wood. Actually, when you drive through certain parts of the country, they advertise oak smoked meat. It's amazing. I thought for a long time, people say, don't smoke with oak. You drive through parts of the country and that's what they advertise. They love their oak smoked meat. So I throw in oak. It don't bother me a bit. Right here, sassafras. It don't bother me a bit to smoke with sassafras. That's a good smoke actually. And as you know, I always promote wild cherry, red cedar and different things, but this is what I've got. Let's go get to smoke the rose. We're gonna let that catch good before we shut that door. When we shut that door, it's gonna start smoking intensely and it's gonna choke that fire off and slow it down. It should go without saying, but I'm gonna say it anyway, just to be on the safe side. Never under any circumstances put pressure treated wood in your smoker. Don't use pressure treated wood in any type of wood stove because it releases sulfuric acid and it will ruin your stove, it'll eat that stove out immediately, but it'll also make you sick if you eat the meat. And another thing, don't put poison ivy limbs or pieces there. Poison ivy can get pretty big. Don't do that, poison ivy smoke is toxic. As you see here, the fire's going good. Let's shut this door. <laughs> All 
All right, we've had these things smoking in here for a couple days. The actual amount of smoke that rolled was probably 24 hours. The smoke don't have to roll solid. These things could hang here basically all winter and well into next spring and never have to come out. I will say, when you slice your hog jaw, you'd be better off to freeze it and then slice it mostly frozen it don't have to be 100 percent frozen but if you if you get it good and cold almost frozen it'll slice a lot better it's mostly fat you can slice it froze basically as hard as it'll go now i'm going to slice these fairly thick pieces and we're going to fry some up for breakfast old frank's here and i'm going to make him a hog jaw breakfast baby it is going to be good. Now, you say, what are you going to do with that? Well, that's kind of all odds and ends and whatever. You can put that in anything. I can put that in a pot of beans. I can grind that into a batch of sausage. There's just a lot of things you can do with that right there. If you have a meat slicer, you can get these a little thinner or prettier and whatnot. But you definitely want to have it more chilled than this because that meat slicer is a wheel knife blade spinning and it's gonna pull that down. I've got experience with them things wadding up. But for now, I'm hungry. It's breakfast, it's morning, it's cold. There's ice on this table this morning. And so we're gonna have some good old breakfast here. And in just a few minutes, you're gonna see Frank bellying down on this mangalitsa pork. Hey, old man. Hey. You want some hog jaw this morning? See. Si. See. Si? I didn't know you were Spanish. <laughs> or did you mean see as in you don't see none? It's on the stove, oh. cook. Oh, what's wrong with you, boy? You having a heart attack? No. Oh, you look like Sanford having a big one. Oh. <laughs> 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 Pretty as it can be. Grab your piece there, son. Okay. People, people okay. get shot on to me again today about calling you son, son. <laughs> I said, man, <laughs> it goes without saying. Without saying. Right. Yeah. All right. He got him a pancake with his. I'm gonna think I can get me a pancake with mine. Here, pay Bob. That's a fish shaped pan. <laughs> Thank you, sir. That is de definitely a fish shaped pan. Yeah, you wow. Yeah, we need some maple syrup. Yeah, we got maple syrup. I like it. Let's take you take a bite of this hog jaw and show the folks that are dying to know what is so good about hog jaw. It's good. Mmm. Mmm. I'm about. Mmm. I'm now like, I put um, I put camp dog on that. Okay, both sides when it was fried. Mm -hmm. I like it. I love it. The thing about hog jaw that's different is it's not strips of meat and strips of fat like bacon. It's more marbled, as you can see in this picture right here. More marbled. So look at him go. He's going. Let me have a little bit of that. Maple syrup is the sweetness of the north. And the south. It's not sorghum's. Sorghum. Ooh. Joe, what do you think about it? Pretty good hog jaw? Yeah, it's good. Now, I, I laid the camp dog on it. Man, what do you think? Good. It's very notorious for being, here in the South, people want to eat hog jaw on January 1st, and they want to eat black eyed peas with it. Mm -hmm. It's a tradition. They say it brings good luck. Sure didn't work last year, mm -hmm. but hey, <laughs> it won't hurt to try again. <laughs> I got him that time. I got you good that time, didn't I, son? You did, son. <laughs> mm. And I'll wear your hog jaws and black eyed peas. Mm -hmm. Hey, I need it every day. Mm. 24. 24? We got seven. Seven? 24 seven. <laughs> <laughs> he got you again. We're going to have to get out of here. He's getting <laughs> he got on every winter way. 
Well, folks, if you get a chance to try some hog jaw, definitely. Shot it down for about 24 hours, a little more maybe, depending on size. Smoke it for 24 hours, slice it up, fry it up, and you got yourself something good to eat. We're going to get on out of here. That's all we've got for you today. We hope you have a great day. We'll see you on the next video.